Gaming Geek here with another speed painting video and this time it is for the new Warcry Ravage Lands Defiled Ruins. This set just came out and I was able to paint this set yesterday in one day, the same day that I bought it. And so this tutorial will hopefully help you get your set painted up and ready for play as soon as possible. Before I do that though, um, I do want to say that I have an extra sheet of tokens. Once I get a hundred likes on this video, I will go ahead and pick a random uh, comment below and send that person this sheet of tokens since I have really no use for it. So if you're interested in that, go ahead, like this video and then comment below. Just check back after I get a hundred likes. And if you're the winner, I'll just reply to your comment and uh, get your contact information so I can get this mailed off to you. Otherwise, my Patreon supporters are um, also receiving prizes for this month, so check that out in the link below as well. I really do like this set. I think it works super well with the base set and the colors are really complementary with each other and so I'm very excited about this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move forward. But before we do that, I wanna just make sure that while you're gluing your pieces together, keep Sigmar, the statue of Sigmar, separate from the base. It'll make painting them a lot easier. Before we get into painting, I just wanna make a note about how to build the pieces. So the instructions are pretty straightforward, not too complicated. And what I wanna say is go ahead and follow the instructions for one, uh, one, 1A, one 1B. One and then 2A as well over here, and that's gonna build uh, these two pieces here. And so you can follow the instructions and you're gonna be good to go in terms of the actual pieces that you're gonna need for the set. Also, you can do um, step number three, which is this piece here. Uh, just two pieces that stick together, and they are number nine and number eight. I don't know why they stopped labeling the pieces. The other strange thing about these instructions is that these instructions are also up here, repeated up here for step six. They're exactly the same and I don't know why they repeated that. Um, and then from uh, this point on, they're just showing you that you can take any of these pieces and combine them any way that you want. But let me go ahead and show you the pieces that you're going to need uh, as you move forward. So obviously you want to do uh, step four and five that creates the chest and the little scatter piece of scatter terrain. But the next step that you want to do is over here, look at this section uh, on this page. And what you're doing is you're combining number five and number 15. And that is creating this piece right here. So these are two pieces that you're to get putting together. And then uh, come down here and you're gonna take piece number one, two, and three which is this long piece, these with the two archways, and then this one right here, this side piece here, and that makes this piece right here. And it says not to glue the pieces together, and the theory is that you can pull these apart and reconfigure them as you go. I went ahead and glued them because I am not going to pull these apart. I'm only gonna use these for Warcry, and so I want the configurations permanent the way that they are on the cards. And then when you come, come over to this side, what you wanna do is piece together uh, 10, which is this one right here, another double archway, and that's different from, I think this is number three. So this is 10, and then you're combining it with 11, which is this piece right here. And that one is right here with just this little piece sticking out like this. And then down here, we see a piece that is number six, and then combined with number seven right here, this piece. And that one is simply this piece where it's just two pieces together, the one without any archways is closed off, and then this uh, side piece is pressed in. Everything else after that, uh, go ahead and follow the instructions to create the Statue of Sigmar, as well as the burners. Also, what's interesting is that the set does not come with these torches, at least I couldn't find it in my set. These uh, accessory pieces are sort of the tricky ones, and so just, I numbered them for you here. Just find those pieces and put them together. 
The other way that you can look at it is to use the back of the box and these, as long as you make these pieces, you can make all of the scenarios that's on the cards. All right, so I went ahead and laid out all of the pieces except for the upper part of Sigmar's statue, the treasure chest, and the two flames. I am grabbing the primer, the red primer, and you don't have to use this brand, but you can use any sort of red primer. Usually it goes on to cars um, that have accidents, and so it's this rusty color. And so I'm gonna use this, and mostly I'm gonna spray from underneath because we're gonna uh, come back and spray it with a different brown from above. And so I'll go, go ahead and spray m uh, almost all of the pieces here, trying to get good coverage. So just do a couple of even coats like that. And it's always better to do a couple lighter coats than it is one thick coat because you don't want this to drip at all. So I'll hit it up like this. And then I'll just rotate to the side. While we're waiting for the red to dry, we're gonna go ahead and do black. I like using two times ultra cover, black primer. And Sigmar statue has a lot of places where it's easy to miss the paint, so make sure you rotate around and get him from all possible angles. Finally, you wanna do the flames uh, with white. So these pieces got really good coverage and it's important to get the red on uh, really well because uh, anywhere where you're not gonna be getting this paint or the dry brush on, uh, is going to be red. So red is actually the most important color that you need to get full coverage on these models. Once it's dry, uh, go ahead and grab what I got was this warm caramel, two times ultra cover, but you can get any tan uh, light brown that you want. The reason why I like this color is it's a little bit orangish and the reason why um, I wanted a base almost orangish uh, brownish color is because orange is a complementary color to blue which is from the base set of Warcry. So I think this will be really uh, a nice complement to the colors of the blue um, ruined city. So what we're going to do is now just paint sort of down at a 45 degree angle because we don't want to get the underside. The underside we want it to remain red and so I'm going to be painting and shooting it down at a 45 degree angle all the way around to get the, only the top sides uh, with this color. And as you can see here, you might want to leave the lower portion with less paint on it so that it just looks like it fades a little bit from top down to bottom. So I'll go ahead and rotate this piece around and hit every side uh, at this angle. And as you can tell, I'm only doing a little bit of spray. I'm not trying to get full coverage, but only hitting the top parts. And if I don't get all of the piece, that's actually okay. That's not a big problem. Now, what's a challenge is to try to get the wall that's underneath here. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit down here in there, even though it's not at a 45 degree angle, just to give it a little bit of color. But it's okay if most of it is still red. All right, so check it out here in the indoors light and you can tell it's sort of two-toned with the red uh, underneath here and then the the orangish tan is sort of up here and I intentionally didn't spray it on very thick but made it a little splotchy so that it looks more weathered. Um, so you still see some of the red that's peeking out from underneath where the spray wasn't that thick. Alright so the first step that we're going to do is actually color in all of the brick 
artwork on inside the archways black because we are going to work on uh, these parts here. I'm just using craft paint. I rarely use my miniature paints on terrain just because there's a lot of surface area and you can save a lot of money. And the reason why we're going to do that first before we dry brush the rest of the stone area is because uh, we actually want some of that dry brush to go uh, onto these bricks. And the general idea behind that is because, you know, dust and stuff like that um, flies all over the place. And especially when things are really old or run down, uh, we don't want things to be super clean. And so that will help tie in uh, these darker black parts in with the rest of the stonework. So keep, keep your brush fairly watered down. Uh, that way it will flow easily into these cracks. And one of the things I do is um, as the brush sort of loses the paint, or, it, or if I want to just grab a little bit more water and have the watered down paint, I put that more towards the bottom because I don't mind if the color, the brown color underneath shows through towards the bottom. So there's a, like a little bit of a fade action happening. So the black isn't, if you can tell, it isn't quite as dark down here towards the bottom. And then I load up my brush with a little bit darker uh, as I move up. So that, that's just a simple technique to provide a little bit of variation with the color. But yeah, just follow the, um, the box and the colors that you see there and fill in all of these spaces with black. And this is gonna take quite a while. This is probably the step that's going to take the longest. All right, so now that we got all of the black undercoat done, we're going to do a dry brush over the black with Williamsburg Blue from Americana Craft Paint. Use a brush. I use one about this size and make sure it is dry because we just want to touch up the highlights and not get too much on there. There's too much. And it doesn't matter a whole lot if you get it onto the um, other brickwork because since we're going to be dry brushing the, those areas as well, um, it will cover over that. Don't forget to do Sigmar as well, the statue with this blue, light blue highlighting and just dry brushing. I think that turned out pretty well. And so next comes the fun part where we are highlighting the rest of the stone with this uh, Americana toffee color, which is a light beige color. So this is uh, cheap brushes for those who paint with oils or um, acrylics. And so you can buy a bunch of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and some on my brush here, rub, rub it off some, and you're just going to wipe down, like so. And again, like I mentioned before, it's okay if you get some on these black parts that you painted before and highlighted. 
doesn't matter. And so this is going to really lighten it up. And like before, I put more up here on top and then have it fade down as it goes down below. I still put some on here like this, but I put, I'm intentionally putting more up here. And don't be afraid to put quite a bit on because um, this set is going to be darker than what's on the box. So these guys are pretty light um, compared to what our set is going to be. So don't, don't be afraid to put quite a bit on and make the highlights just come out like that. So here you can see the difference between the finished one and the one we haven't put any of the toffee onto. So that's about the amount of um, paint that you're dry brushing on there. Let me also go ahead and show you how to work your way around some of these bigger archways that are black. And so again, it doesn't matter if you actually get some of this highlighting onto the black, but you aren't intentionally trying to get it on there. But see how I just go ahead and brush it on here like this, not caring if it gets onto, I just turn it sideways like this so that it minimizes the surface area and just go like that for these arches. So I don't, I don't go through it with a smaller brush or anything like that. And I, I hit up these like this. Again, you're going to get some onto the black, but Again, it doesn't matter. It gives that sense of tying in uh, all of the pieces together. So I try to get it into these crevices a little bit more up here. But that's basically how you do these sections as well. And don't forget to get th these lower portions right here. And just turn your brush sideways like that to get those in. So that's how that, that looks good. Next you want to grab any silver that you have. I'm using Army Painter Plate Male Metal. And what we're going to do is just dry brush all of the metal parts. And make sure that you get your brush dry, which sometimes can be difficult with silver. And then just brush it over like this. See, even this feels a little bit too wet to me. And this is why it doesn't matter if you got some of the other paints on there, because as you dry brush over it, you're covering up whatever uh, accidental color that you got on there. And you want to do the same with these chests. And you have to be careful not to get it into the recesses that you want to keep black. I'm going to do these as well, these braziers. just highlight these parts right here just a little bit grab an alternative metal color it can be gold or um, here I have grabbed old bronze from Reaper but any other metal color and you can even use silver if you want and so I'm going to go ahead and do all the other metal parts as well as the sigil so these parts really simply just cover it over like this you don't have to fill in the whole thing and they're here here on the door there's these faces that I'm going to dry brush and like you see me doing here it's pretty quick you're not trying to fill in the whole thing but just touch up on it like that and then these rings, as well as these symbols here. And again, you don't need to 
fill in all of the recesses, but you're just hitting the tops of it just to give it that metal color to it. So real quick. As well, I'm going to have one of my other chests have an alternative color to it, and so I'm going to put this bronze on here. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. You can still keep the silver, but I thought it'd be good just to have the objective tokens be a little bit different from each other. Final step is to paint these flames for the braziers, and I have contrast color orc flesh, but you definitely shouldn't go out and buy this $8 bottle uh, just for these two flames. If you don't have wash, just use green paint and then slowly highlight by adding white to it to lighten it up and you can get the same effect. So because I, I have this already, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Here's a pro tip. Just take your finger and wipe off some of it so that the white underneath shows up again. Final step is to go outside and put on two coats of Tester's Dull Coat or any of your favorite matte varnish. One of the things I realized too in setting up a scenario is that this grate shows what's underneath and that doesn't make sense. So I just got a piece of junk mail with some black on it and I'm going to cut out a piece and glue it on underneath. So there you have it. That's how you paint the set really quickly and get it on your table so that you can play your next game of Warcry. Again, if you like this video and make a comment below, I'll be uh, drawing one of the random folks who are commenting below to send them this token sheet uh, via mail. So uh, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.